Okay, so we've had some warnings before that we need not trust patterns. That mathematicians will be excited by patterns, will be motivated by patterns, but won't actually believe a pattern until there's a logical, sound logical reason why that pattern should be true. Because of the following reason. So now I'm going to play with our game now about what to do with sequences if you don't believe in patterns. For example, two, four, six, eight, something. What's the next number in the sequence? Well, clearly, clearly the answer's 17. Wouldn't you agree? And how do I know it's 17? Because I've decided this sequence here is following this particular formula. 7 24 n to the 4th minus 35 12 n cubed plus 245 24 n squared minus 151 12 n plus 7. And if you don't believe me, put 1 into this formula. So you get 7 24 times 1 to the 4th, so it's times 1, so 7 24 times 1, minus 35 12 times 1 cubed, 1, and so on. And despite all the fractions, n equals 1 gives you the answer 2. Then put n equals 2, choose the number 2 for this formula, out comes 4, despite all the fractions. Put n equals 3 into the formula, out comes 6. Put n equals 4 into the formula, out comes 8. Put n equals 5 into the formula, and out comes 17. So clearly this formula is following, this formula is producing that sequence, therefore the next number is 17. Actually, you can change your mind. I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Actually, it's really following this formula down here and the final answer is negative eight. Two, four, six, eight, negative eight, because it's actually following this formula this time. Negative 0.75 to n to the fourth, plus 7.5 n cubed, minus 26.25 n squared, plus 35, 9.5 n, minus 18. Put n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in that formula, and out comes 2, 4, 6, 8, negative 8. Actually, the thing is, you can put any number you like for this final, final uh, term in the sequence, because there's always going to be a formula that fits any number you like. Namely, there's a formula that fits this particular sequence. n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, n equals 5. Out comes 2, 4, 6, 8, A. There, there we are. There you cannot trust patterns. In fact, you can write down a formula for any, any set of numbers that you like, which is just wonderful and amazing and a little bit mind-blowing. So let me show you how I did that. How do I create these crazy formulas? So what I'm really doing is collecting data. So I'll do it in the most general sense. So I'll be like a high school teacher now. I'll use the variables x and y. And what I'm doing here in this particular example is I've got x could be 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5. And I want the output to be when x is 1, output of 2. When x is 2, output of 4, then 6, then 8, and then whatever number you like. 17, negative 8 square root of pi, uh, 1 over the square root of 2 plus 74 thousandths all divided by 94, whatever you like. Any number would work, A for any number. So let me show you how to take a set of data that's given to you and find a formula that's going to work. So if you don't believe in patterns, you can put down any answer you like and even justify your answer with a formula. So let me clean the board and we'll do that next. Okay, so let's now be very general and find a formula that, that fits these four data points. I didn't go x is 1, 2, 3, 4 this time, I'd be more general. x is 1, 5, 6, or 10. And when x is 1, I want an output of 14, please. When x is 5, I want an output of 12. When x is 6, an output of 24. And when x is 10, I'd like an output of negative 3, please. Can you write down a formula that fits that data? And the answer is yes, you can. You can, I can, we all can. Now let me do it first because what I'm about to write down is going to look incredibly scary and frightening at first. You think there's no way you can do it, but the answer is yes. So when I write down the answer, we'll have a little panic moment, but then we'll take a deep breath and we'll see what I'm doing is actually magically straightforward and it's actually kind of fun. All right, so here goes. So I'm going to just write down the formula. I've not seen this data before. I'm just going to do it cold in real time in front of you right now. I'm sure I'm going to make arithmetic, arithmetic mistakes. I always do, but I think I'll catch myself and it'll be grand in the end. All right. Here is an actual formula that fits that data on the nose. It goes as follows. Y equals, here goes. Uh, so I want 14 as my first data point, but I don't want it for 5, 6, or 10. I want to have it at 1. So I'll put x minus 5, x minus 6, x minus 10 over here, and divide that by uh, negative 4, negative 5, and negative 9. Then when x is 5, I want 12, but I don't want it to happen at 1, 6, or 10. So I'll put x minus 1 x minus 6, x minus 10 here, and on the bottom I shall put um, 
4, negative 1, and uh, negative 5 here. I think I'm okay. Uh, yes, okay. Uh, when x is 6, I want an output of 24, but I want that to happen not at 1, 5, or 10. So x minus 1, x minus 5, x minus 10. But when x actually is 6, I want to counteract it with 5 on the bottom, 1 on the bottom, and negative 4 on the bottom. I think I'm okay. And then finally, plus negative 3, which is the same as take away 3 of I don't want this at x is 1, 5, or 6, x minus 1, x minus 5, x minus 6. I do want it at 10, and when x is 10, I want to counteract things with 9, 5, and 4 on the bottom. <laughs> Did you catch that? Okay, you saw my thinking. That was me thinking out loud, I was doing this, and look what came out. It's a mess. This is a messy, messy formula. Nonetheless, I claim it's a formula that works. It's a formula that fits that data exactly. All right, so what's going on? So deep breath, deep breath. All right, well you do see there are sort of four chunks, there's four terms. In fact, one for each data point, one for the data point 14, uh, for the output of 12, the output of 24, the output of negative three. See that at least. And you heard me going things about these top lines, that I don't want it to work for x equals one, or x equals six, or x equals 10. I want things to do stuff. So what do I do? Let's try it. Let's actually try putting it in x. Let's put in x equals one, and see if 14 really truly does come out. So I'll look at these four terms. I'll, this one's right in front of me now. What happens if I put x equals one into this chunk? I'll get negative three times, oh, one take away one. I put an x minus one there, because when x is one, that's zero. So whatever else happens on the top line, I get negative three times zero, all divided by some numbers, that's all zero. When x is one, because of that term there, this is zero. Aha, uh -huh. because I put one over here as well. When x is one in this term, I get 24 times zero and stuff, divided by stuff, that's all zero when x is one. And I put one over here as well. This vanishes for x, vanishes for x equals one. There is no, when x is one, 12 times zero. So the only term that survives is the first term for x equals 1. Because I didn't put x minus 1 on the top. I've got x minus 5, x minus 6, and x minus 10 on the top. Then I kind of made it vanish for 5, 6, and 10. However, for x equals 1, what do I get? If I actually put in x equals 1, I get 14 times 1 take away 5, negative 4, times 1 take away 6, negative 5, times 1 take away 10, negative 9 on the top, divided by, and look what I arranged the bottom line to be exactly the same as the top line for when x is 1. Because then it becomes 14 times, that all cancels to leave me just 14. So when x is 1, this formula becomes 14 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0, that's 14. Wow. Now maybe it's starting to make some sense what's going on. Let's try another one. Let's try say uh, x equals 6. Did I arrange things so that when x is 6, out comes 24? Well, yes, I did, because I made sure it was an x minus 6 there. So this term had nothing to do with 6s. This vanishes for x equals 6, goes to 0. This term vanishes for x equals 6. I made sure it vanishes for 6. This term vanishes for x equals 6. I made sure it vanishes with an x minus 6 on top. The only term that survives is this term for x equals 6. In fact, this term here vanishes for 1, 5, and 10, but survives for 6. Yeah? Now, when x actually is 6, what am I getting? I'll get 24 times on the top line, 5 times 1 times negative 4, and hopefully that's what I put on the bottom line. I did 5, 1, negative 4. So in x is 6, I get 0 plus 0 plus 24 times 1, 24 plus 0 is 24. So that's all I did. I went through each data point. So when, when I was doing x equals 10, I want an output of negative 3. There it is. And I just made sure this term vanishes for x equals 1, 5, and 6. Vanishes the 1, vanishes the 5, vanishes the 6, so it'll survive for 10. And I quickly did the arithmetic in my head. When x actually is 10, I want a bottom line to cancel out the top line. 9, 5, and 4 is correct. When x is 10, I'll get negative 3 times 1, and all other terms vanishing. So it will be negative 3. So actually, now you can see the structure. And with a little bit of practice, you can actually just write these things down like I just did. In fact, let's do another example. Let me do this example. I kind of like this example because it's very personal to me. What do I mean by that? Let's try this. So um, it's going to be just three data points this time. Uh, at x equals 1, 2, and 3. I'll go sort of a very sort of ordered way this time. But when x is 1, I want 10. When x is 2, I want 9. And when x is 3, I want 13. So let me write down a formula that fits that data. Now it's just three data points, so it'll be a little bit simpler this time, just three terms. Here they come. 
Uh, when x equals 1, I want an output of 10, but I want everything to vanish for the other two inputs, 2 and 3. x equals 2 vanishes, x equals 3 vanishes, and I want to counteract what actually happens when I put in x equals 1 by putting negative 1 and negative uh, 2 on the bottom. So when x is 1, I get 10 times 1, 10, and the other terms I'm going to make sure will vanish. When x is 2, I want a 9 to come out. I want it to vanish for x minus 1 and x minus 3. So vanish for 1 and 3, sorry. So I need x minus 1, x minus 3 on the top. And when I actually put in x equals 2, I will get uh, on the top I'll get a 1 and a um, negative 1. So I need a 1 times negative 1 on the bottom to counteract putting in x equals 2. So when x equals 2, this vanishes, that survives, I'll get 9 times 1. And then when x equals 3, I'll put it over here, I want 13 times vanish for x equals 1, vanish for x equals 2, survive for x equals 3. When x actually equals 3, I want 2 and 1 on the bottom to counteract the top. Voila. So there is a formula that actually fits that data. In fact, if you, it's not too bad. You actually simplify this. It's not as hard as you think it's going to be. And the answer is, I've written out here, is 5 halves x squared minus 17 halves x plus 16. So there is actually a quadratic formula that fits that data. In fact, you'll see that this technique always gives a quadratic formula for three data points. And often sometimes it's asked in, in school books, please find a quadratic formula that fits these three data points. We can do it this way. It's grand. But why do I like this formula in particular? Well, what's the tenth letter of the alphabet? Let's choose a pen that I know works. I think this one works. Um, the tenth letter of the alphabet is J. What's the ninth letter of the alphabet? It's I. What's the thirteenth letter of the alphabet? It's M. This spells Jim. A lot of people know me as Jim. It's my nickname. I'm normally James, but a lot of people know me as Jim. So here is the quadratic formula that spells my nickname, Jim. It's my personal quadratic formula. In fact, I love this. You can actually find forms that spell your name too. If I want to go with my name, my full name, James, all I have to do is write down a formula that actually fits this data. One, two, three, four, five, five letters. J is 10, A is 1, M is 13, E is uh, 5, and S is 19. I could then write down a formula that spells James. In fact, loads of fun. I know the algebra gets tedious if you actually want to simplify your formula. So we actually have a little computer program that will do it for you if you want using this very technique. You can have your own personal polynomial. These formulas tend to be called polynomials about powers of x. So here you can write a polynomial that spells your name too. In fact, this web app, which I'll show you in a moment, even graphs your formula for you and you can see what your name actually looks like in mathematics. This is just so cool and so powerful. So I invite you to have lots of fun with it. And now, in general, you can write down any number you like for any sequence anyone gives you. If you're like, you know, doing something like you know, intelligence test, what's the next sequence of this number? Three, four, five, six. Clearly, it's 83 and a half. And you can write down a formula to prove you're right. Oh, so fun. So fun. All right, thanks, everyone. I'll see you next time.